If you've ever wanted a beautiful water feature in your yard and you've looked at other tutorials and just thought that you need an engineering degree or something to do this, then this video is totally for you. I'm going to explain this method to create a pondless water feature where the water comes up from outside of the ground and flows back into the ground. It gives a really cool effect and the greatest thing about this type of water feature is that number one it's one of the easiest kinds to do so if you're a beginner and you've never done this before this is a great place to start and number two it's really eco-friendly because the water basin lives underground it's not prone to evaporating the water as much so you're going to save a lot of water using this method and also it's a little bit safer so if you have pets or kids that you're worried about them falling into a pond or getting injured on the pond. Um, this kind of hides all of that so that everybody stays safe. So I feel like the easiest way to explain this before we actually get outside and start doing this is via this diagram that I drew so crudely. So my apologies for the actual look of the diagram, but it's really not that difficult. And I think that this drawing really simplifies everything that we'll be doing. So. The first thing that you'll need is uh, an underground basin. They, they sell all different kinds, wide, narrow, tall, deep. So this whole entire thing will be underground. Uh, the ground level is actually here where the pink is. So you're really not going to see any of this. It's all kind of hidden underground. And then you'll need some sort of pump. Um, I'm going to be using an electric pump for this video, but I've been doing some research. And if you're curious about the pump that I'm using or some solar options, you can check out the link. It's in the description below. I'm using an electric pump. So therefore there's a unit at the bottom of the basin right here, this black thing. And then there's a wire that comes up from the unit and plugs into the wall. So I'm going to be using that and I'll show you how to hook that up. And then also the other part that you need, some pumps come with this and some don't, but it actually is a, a tube or a pipe that will connect the pump actually all the way up to where you want the water to spit out. They sell these fountain kits that you can get if your particular pump doesn't come with this, but you definitely need that because the water from the pump needs to travel upward in a tube in order to for you to be able to actually place the water where you want it to go. Otherwise it'd just be squirting out everywhere. We don't want that. And then to do the top part, what I used is sort of a grate. Replacement grates for grills work really well. It has to reach over the edges of your bucket. And it also has to have the ability for you to cut a hole. But these grill covers are great because they do have that circle in the middle and that's right where you can stick that pipe or hose through the rocks that you're going to put to disguise this bucket will set on top of this grill. So it's a really sturdy surface and don't go out and buy a grill cover just yet. Um, I actually found a piece from an old desk. It's like, a, it was an old metal desk and I actually used one of the trays from that desk and that's what I'm using. So you'll see that too. And then on top of that grate, we're going to put a layer of hardware cloth which is just a, a wire mesh so nothing gets inside of that bucket and we're going to pin everything down and then we're going to cover that with rocks and basically there's your fountain and then i also created a trap door right here and this is kind of important if you will need to service the pump or i live in pennsylvania so it gets really cold here in the winter so every winter i actually remove my pump from the bottom of my fountain so that it doesn't freeze in there and get damaged it's an extra step it's not required to make this work but it will save you a ton of time in the future this drawing and all of the detailed instructions will be on the website the link is in the description so now that we're understanding what we're actually building here, let's get outside and do this thing. So my name is Amy. I'm from prettypurpledoor.com and I help DIY home gardeners create landscapes that are uniquely you. So this is just one of the many projects that I do to help you create the landscape of your dreams. Okay, so here we are outside. So the first step that you'll need is to buy your basin and then you're going to have to dig a hole and actually put this in the ground. Now I did this several years ago, so obviously mine's already in the ground and this is in a raised bed, which made it a lot easier. Um, you're not going to have water in your 
at this time. Obviously I do because I'm just servicing my pump and things. So I thought I'd make this video, but in your situation, you won't have water. You don't have to fill this until the very end of the process. So after you dig your hole and fit your basin into your hole so that the top of the basin is lined up with the ground level, you're gonna move on to setting up your pump. Okay, so for this step of setting up your pump, I'd recommend just filling a five gallon bucket uh, with, this is about halfway full with water, and just using this as a test to see how your pump is actually gonna work before you put it into the ground and it makes it a lot harder to kind of figure everything out. So I filled this with water and I have my extension cable right here so I can plug it in. And this is the part that I was referring to before. This is the base of the pump and it'll come something like this without this piece in it. This is an extension kit I bought. But you're going to need either a plastic piping that fits into this hole here or some sort of tubing that can connect to this. This was a really great buy, actually. I'll uh, leave the link to this in the description below so that you can get your own kit. So this piece here that I have on, this came with my kit. It's called a diverter. So you can see here that it's got a little arrow pointing in either direction, and you can actually twist this. And what that's going to do is change the pressure that's going up the pump and any excess will shoot out of this part of the pump so if you got an extra powerful pump and you don't want it on full speed you can use a diverter like this to adjust the speed setting on the pump and then it just had all these extra pieces and it came with a couple different flow options for the top piece but here's the kit here and it'll show all different options there's four different fountain kits came with the diverter some poles and some attachments adapters once you have this figured out and you have it to a height that's the same height as your bucket or a little bit higher these are submersible pumps so it needs to be completely submersed in water to work and then i'm going to plug this in and just kind of see what happens and see i have a nice steady flow coming out of this, so that's good. And if I wanted to, I could reach in the bucket here and I can adjust this diverter. And you can see here how much less is coming out of the top. So, you know, that might be good there. Maybe I don't need it on as, that's as weak as it'll go for me. And then here, whoa. <laughs> so you don't want it to be on that strong. And this will all just depend on the type of pump that you have how strong it is, is gonna depend on how high it'll go. But the diverter is a great way to sort of control the speed at which it's going to come out. Okay, so once you have that figured out, unplug it and take it out of here. We're not going to need that anymore. And the next thing that I'm going to do is create some sort of wrapper for this, fil for this part of the pump. This here is the filter. So it's already got a built-in filter, but I like to cover it again. I just wrap it in some cheesecloth and tape it just to prevent any sort of pebbles or debris from getting in the pump. It's gonna make it last a lot longer. And there's also filter boxes and things like that. If you click the link in the description, it'll give you a couple other options that you can use. The first time I did this, I used like a food cloche, one of those that you put on uh, food outside to prevent like the bugs and stuff from getting on the food and that worked pretty well too So but I think this will be easier actually So I'm gonna try this now that I have the whole thing apart So here I'm just wrapping this cheesecloth around and then I'm gonna just do a one pass around of electrical tape This is obviously easier if your pump isn't soaking wet already, but you live and you learn right? So I have my little makeshift filter on here the next step is to position the grate on top here. So this is my grate. Like I said, it was a, it was just a random piece of my desk. <laughs> and I cut a hole in the center. I used a Dremel tool to just sort of hatch out a little square in the center. And then this part here that's cut out is my trap door area. So 
I need it to position like this and and go over the top of this fountain. If you have to, you can remove your top piece of your fountain. This is where I want my trap door to be in this corner over here. And you can see that this is a little bit bouncy. So, and I've noticed that over time, this has sagged a little bit on me. So I have these random pieces of rebar. I'm gonna just put these underneath. And this is not required, especially if you are using a grill grate or something a little sturdier. But I think that putting these in underneath this grate are, is gonna really keep it more stable for me. Okay. So that's keeping it nice and firm. And the next step is to put the hardware cloth over top of this. So here's my hardware cloth. And it's just a big piece of metal mesh. And I have this so that it's much bigger. Make it a, like a decent amount bigger than your actual opening. And uh, I also have a hole cut in the center, again, to fit this fountain through. And this is my tr crazy trap door concoction. So I cut out a piece of the hardware cloth and I taped the edges with some Gorilla Tape just because it, when you reach your hand in here, you don't want to get yourself cut. And then I just cut another piece of mesh and connected it with uh, two of these, what are these wire tie things? <laughs> and uh, it's sort of like a flap. So when I'm not using the trap door, it's still covered. So I'm going to position this on top here. The, uh, the foliage <laughs> of my plants is definitely filled in over here. So this was like wide open when I originally did this, but everything's grown in really nicely. So it's nice to see, but it, it's making it a little bit more difficult for me to show you exactly what's going on here. Position this like so, like so. Make sure that that goes all the way down that the great hole lines up with the trap door hole in your hardware cloth and make sure that this is touching the ground in all the areas. If you have plants like I do, just don't hurt your little plants. Now I just have some pins here, some landscape pins. So I'm gonna hold the mesh down using these in just a bunch of different locations. So once this is in place, you're going to cover all of this with some dirt. I'm going to mulch this afterwards, so I'm not going to do that, but you should fill in around it with dirt just to make sure. And I'm going to plug this in just to see how it goes here. In order to do this so that you don't electrocute anyone or anything, these boxes are really great. They're like outdoor waterproof boxes. If you ever use Christmas lights, you've probably seen these before. So all you have to do is take both pieces and you'll plug them in. And then you'll connect them inside of this box. Maybe I'm doing this wrong this way. Like so, so it's inside of a case here. And then I'm just running this underneath the, the giant hosta I have here. And this is going onto my porch. So all you have to do is really just bury this excess wire. This uh, nozzle for my fountain actually can pull up a little bit to make different splashing effects too. I think I like it right about there. So now that I have everything in place, I'm gonna turn this fountain off for a minute and then I'm gonna cover everything with the stones and you'll be able to see what it looks like in the end.
So here's the final result. And I added some mulch. Mulch is your best friend, by the way, to cover up any mistakes or pieces of mesh that are showing through or anything like that. Um, I still have to kind of rinse it off. But you can see here, here's my, my little fountain. And I've covered it for the most part with some stones, but you know, you can leave this out if you'd like. I, like, I kind of like it to be hidden. And then a lot of people have asked me where I put the cord. So I'm going to show you now. It's coming out over here somewhere. There we go. Right here. It's just covered with mulch. And I bury it and I, I kind of run it through under my hosta here. And then it runs along here, and there's my extension part, which clearly I, <laughs> I just kind of threw over there. I haven't straightened it out yet, but that's kind of how it's set up, so you can't even see the cord. And then from here, just a nice little peaceful feature, and you can't see the bucket at all, so it's like, where is that water coming from? Where is it going? How is that happening? Just kind of neat. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And make sure that you stay tuned and check out the next DIY awesome gardening project in the, the next video. I'll see you over there. Bye.